Hello everyone, welcome back to our series here at The Word at Work, where we're looking at some of Jesus' key lessons from his farewell speech. The farewell speech is found in John 13 to 17. In the previous episode, we mentioned that John 13 to 17 is a block of teaching aimed at Jesus' disciples in light of Jesus' departure. Jesus has told his disciples that the hour of his glorification has come. And that's just another way of Jesus saying, the time for me to go to the cross is here. Because the cross ultimately will display the, the love and the glory of the Father and the Son. So Jesus is giving this farewell teaching, this farewell speech to his disciples who will carry on the mission of Jesus after he departs. So in this episode, we're going to look at Jesus' new command that he gives to his disciples. And that can be found in John 13, verses 34 and 35. It says this, A new command I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. That is Jesus' new command. The first thing to note is that it's not actually new. This is not the first time that the Bible has said this. If you flip back to Leviticus 19, God has told his people that they are to love each other and to love their neighbor. But actually what is new is the manner and the way in which they are to love one another. Some people are quick to quote this verse. This is what Christianity is about. Just love one another. And often when they say that, what they mean is really just tolerate each other. Just accept each other as you are. Your lifestyles, your version of the truth, your morality, just accept each other. Just love one another. We love to quote this verse. But the manner and the way in which we are to love each other, to show that we are Jesus' disciples, is dictated by Jesus' love for his own disciples. So that naturally begs the question, How did Jesus love his disciples? And I think throughout John's gospel, we can find a lot of ways in which Jesus loves his disciples. But I want to just stick to the to the context. Last in the last episode, we looked at John 13 and we spoke about Jesus having loved his own. He loved them to the end. And I think what comes next is the foot washing. And I spoke about how the foot washing is a demonstration of Jesus's love because it looks forward to the cross where Jesus will wash them by his blood. But in the foot washing episode here in verse 15, Jesus says to his disciples, For I've given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Jesus has loved his disciples in a sacrificial way, in a servant-hearted way. He has stooped down to the status of a slave and that's what it that's what it meant by taking out his outer garment and putting a towel around him and he serves his disciples and so this starts to fill in this command to love one another as Jesus has loved you is in a sacrificial way and we know ultimately Jesus loved us and served us by going to the cross for us a sacrificial act but John also tells us a little more about this love Later, if we, if we move forward to John 14, Jesus makes this explicit statement. He's having a conversation with his disciples. Thomas says, Lord, we don't know the way. We don't know where you're going. Jesus says to him, Thomas, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No one will come to the Father except through me. Jesus makes this explicit claim that he is the truth. And so he has loved his disciples with the truth and in truth because his his character, his actions, his being, the way he showed his love is undergirded, is underpinned by truth. Later in verse 15 in that same chapter, if you love me, he says to disciples, you will keep my commands. Your discipleship is seen in you obeying my commands. And commands are are propositional statements. Commands are statements about truth, about ultimate reality, about how we relate to each other and to the world. And so Jesus says, I am the truth. Obey my commands, which are truth. I have loved you in truth and therefore love one one another in the truth, but also sacrificially. 
So two things. Jesus is saying sacrificially love each other as I've loved you, but love each other with the truth as well. It's not merely just emotions. Love is not merely just emotions or likes or dislikes. There's concrete, a concrete truth to it. But Jesus also illustrates what it means to love. What it means to love in truth. If you have a Bible, flip back to John 8. John 8, the first 11 verses is this episode where the Pharisees and the Sadducees, who are the religious leaders of the time, they come up to Jesus. I think they're trying to trick him. And they say to him, Teacher, the law of Moses says, if this woman is caught in adultery, we should stone her. What should we do? Jesus pauses and he looks at them and he says, Well, you who is without sin cast the first stone. And slowly these religious leaders walk away. And it's just Jesus and the woman left. And he says to her, Woman, where are they? No one has condemned you. She said, No one, Lord. Then Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go. From now on, sin no more. So Jesus in love moves towards this lady. He doesn't condemn her, he doesn't judge her, he doesn't kill her, as the religious leaders are asking. But he doesn't leave her in her sin, he embraces her, he says to her, I don't condemn you. But he says these important words, go, and from now on, sin no more. The God of truth, Jesus who is the truth, who embodied the truth, who loved with the truth, says to the woman, you can't stay as you are, you've got to change. And so for us, To be disciples of Jesus, to love in the way that Jesus loved, to love one another in that way, is to love sacrificially and it's to love with truth. But let's look at the second part of this new command. So Jesus says, I give you a new command, love one another just as I have loved you. So he qualifies it. You are to love one another. And then he says, by this action, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So Jesus is giving this command, this new command, with a promise. He says it will show the authenticity of your faith. The genuineness of your faith will be seen in your love for one another. Love that is sacrificial and is undergirded by truth. But there's a promise. It is a potent form of witness of mission, of evangelism, the world will know. All people will know that you are my disciples by the love that you have for each other. And just in closing, I just want to, I just want to highlight two things there. The first is genuine and authentic discipleship that wants to follow after Jesus is communal. Genuine, authentic discipleship is communal. Think about it. Jesus is saying, they will know you are my disciples, my true followers by your love. But you can't love someone if you don't see them, if you don't rub shoulders with them. You have to be in community to love someone. You have to express that love by seeing people. So authentic discipleship and love is based in community. You've got to be in community. No man is an island. But the second thing here is that the love that you have for each other is not in a holy huddle. The world and people have got to see it. That is the implication here in verse 35. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. John is expecting all these people to be watching Christians as they love each other sacrificially and in truth. And then they will say, those are really, truly Jesus' disciples because they have this great love. So the Christian faith, the Christian discipleship, Authentic discipleship is communal, and it's with the, with the world that is watching us. It is not hidden. And so my hope in this episode that you would be encouraged to love others as Jesus first loved us, and then to, to love one another, and to show that you are truly his disciples, and people will say, yes, those are truly followers of Christ. Thanks for listening, guys. It's great to be together. We'll see you for our next episode. That was awesome. Thanks.